Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth video of the chapter hydrogen. Now if you are taking a look into all these particular sections, you should know that we are dealing with the reduced syllabus. Okay, whatever the government has taken a step in order to see that the portion is going to be deducted. Okay, so I am considering only that particular portion which is going to be deducted. And if you are going to compare that with the NCRT, you will find that there are certain things which are missing. So, those certain things which are missing, you can skip it. Alright, and just concentrate on whatever the things that we are doing in the course. Alright, so for today, we will start up with the next section and that is going to be water. Okay, so there is a lot to discuss, a lot to understand. So, when we speak about water under the section of hydrogen, what comes to our mind is one of the sources of water and that is going to be the rain, right? So, the rain water actually, the rain water is considered to be the pure form of water, okay? So, this pure form of water, of course, it contains certain dissolved gases from the atmosphere. Okay, so although it is pure, it contains it contains certain dissolved gases, right? from the atmosphere such as oxygen, nitrogen and all. Okay, now this particular rainwater which is free from most of the element, when you treat that particular water with detergents or soap, that particular water has a tendency to generate or produce foam or what you can call it as lather when we treat this particular rainwater with soap, right? So, when we treat this particular water with soap, so you take any particular water and when you treat that with soap or detergent and if it gives you foam, if it gives you lather, then such kind of water we consider it as soft water. So, if I want to define a soft water, I can say that a soft water is a water which has a tendency to produce or to create lather with soap. That particular water, we consider it as a soft water. Right? Now, on the other hand, there are certain type of water. Let us say this particular rainwater hits the ground. The moment that it hits the ground, it dissolves some of the element in it. Okay. And in case, if this water contains, if it contains salts of calcium ions, and magnesium ions. Okay, that is the salts of calcium and magnesium. These particular salts which do not produce lather on with soap. Okay, so such kind of water which does not create any particular lather, it does not create foam on that particular water upon treatment with soap, such kind of water we consider it as hard water. Okay, so such kind of water we consider it as hard water. So, the hard water as what we have 
is further divided into two different types depending upon what kind of salt of calcium and magnesium is present in that particular water okay now let us say that there is a hard water and this hard water has salt but these are either calcium or magnesium hydrogen carbonates okay we also call it as calcium or magnesium bicarbonate it can be calcium hydrogen carbonate or magnesium hydrogen carbonate we can also call it as calcium bicarbonate magnesium bicarbonate okay in such kind of cases if this is a condition then that hard water is a temporary hard water right now on the other hand if we have this hard water and in case of this particular hard water can is of calcium or magnesium but this time along with calcium and magnesium the iron magnesium iron is chloride that is it is calcium chloride or magnesium chloride or it can be calcium sulfate or magnesium sulfate okay so in such kind of condition we call it as permanent hard water all right so it's going to be called as a permanent hard water now it does not mean that we cannot drink this particular hard water it cannot be converted into a soft water nothing like that we can convert a hard water into soft water for our use of course there are certain techniques which we are going to discuss now but before going further we would like to show the same type of experiment and that is going to be here now in order to understand the difference between the hard water and the soft water what shall we do is we are going to take into a consideration of this experiment let's say that we have an hard water here and we have a soft water correct so according to the theory what they say when we react this particular waters with detergent it should not give us lather let's see for a moment i have taken over here some amount of detergent and that is nothing more than a soap okay so here let us take some amount and let's pour into the hard water now as you can see the matter that i have poured so much amount of detergent yet it has not given me any of the lather let's check what happens if i'm going to stir it well so even after stirring it so well i hope you can see that there occurs no good reaction okay rather the most of the amount remains still at the bottom as a precipitate now this particular thing we consider it as a precipitate so let's keep this hard water aside or here taking into consideration of a simple soft water let's check so the moment i add small amount of water you can see bubbles over there so let's see what happens now now as you can see the amount now this particular foam or this particular bubbles what it is giving us we consider it as lather okay so this is a prime difference between a hard water and soft water you can actually see the difference yet right so this is your soft water this is your hard water so let's get started back coming towards the next section as how we are going to treat these particular hard water right so when we start with this when we take into consideration of a temporary hard water that means in this particular hard water we are going to have either calcium or 
magnesium. Hydrogen carbons, right? Now, in such cases, what will happen is, either if it is a calcium hydrogen carbonate or magnesium hydrogen carbonate, these are usually soluble in water. That means you cannot see those particular particles. Now, we need to remove these particles from water. So, the first method as how we are going to treat this one is simple by boiling. Now, boiling of this particular hard water, okay, works only for a temporary hard water. That means the water which contains calcium and magnesium hydrogen carbonates. So when we do boil this water, so what is going to happen is the soluble, the soluble magnesium hydrogen carbonate, this is how we have to represent that. Okay, so when we boil this, therefore, once we start boiling this one, what will happen is this soluble magnesium hydrogen carbonate converts itself into particles or precipitate of magnesium hydroxide. Now this one falls down, it accumulates down as powder or what you can call it as a precipitate. So this one is in soluble in water okay along with this what happens is this section comes out in the form of carbon dioxide okay so this is how it comes out we can filter that water and we can use that water and that particular water is free from magnesium hydrogen carbonate right so if we have about the calcium so when we have calcium, calcium hydrogen carbonate. As we start to boil this particular thing, upon boiling, what happens is calcium hydrogen carbonate gets converted into calcium carbonate. Now this is again insoluble and it precipitates down. Plus, along with this, what emits out is going to be, so see over here, there is only one carbon with three oxygens. Over here, we have two carbons, right? So one of the carbon comes out in the form of a carbon dioxide, along with there is an emission of a molecule of water. Now this is a method as how we treat a temporary hard water. Now, coming towards the next process and that particular process we call the class process. So, when we are speaking about the class process, in this particular case, they take a temporary hard water and then they react this particular hard water with lime calculated amount of lime is added. Now what is lime? Lime is calcium hydroxide. Okay, so in the Clark's process, what they do is they take the temporary hard water and they treat this particular temporary hard water along with calculated amount. Calculated amount of lime. Now lime is calcium hydroxide. These all small small things are very important for you people. Okay, especially in the annual examination, they will be asking this for the two mass subdivision. So you need to pay attention to these small small concepts. Okay, so what is going to happen here? As we take this particular water, and water is going to contain either calcium or magnesium hydrogen carbonates, right? So, when we add over here calculated amount of lime to that, so what will happen is, 
Let us say we have plus one. That is magnesium bicarbonate, or magnesium hydrogen carbonate. And this one is going to be treated with calcium hydroxide. So as we treat this one with calcium hydroxide, first thing is that this particular magnesium here is going to get converted into magnesium hydroxide. Of course, it is insoluble. Right? This is going to be insoluble. What remains with us is going to be calcium. So this calcium reacts with this one. So calcium carbonate is formed along with the elimination of. It is going to eliminate now small amount of water. So here this is also insoluble that is it is going to get precipitated down so as this. So we have two insoluble precipitates. Right? So this is how it reacts with the magnesium hydrogen carbonate. Now taking a look further as how it would react with calcium hydrogen carbonates. So when we react this one with Calcium hydroxide, we get over here. If we observe, we have two calciums now. So therefore, it will generate two calcium carbonate. Along with this, there is going to be elimination of water molecules. So let's check. Hydrogen 2, hydrogen 2 over here. So 4 hydrogens. So 2 into 2 is 4 hydrogens there. 2 into 3 is 6, 6 plus 2, 8, 8 oxygens on my product side, so 2 plus, or here 2 into 3 is 6, so therefore again 8 oxygens, 2 calciums, of course, 2 calciums, right, so this is a way as how we treat the temporary hard water, so the method of treating temporary hard water are two, either we need to boil it or either we need to go with the Clark's process. So in Clark process, what we have is nothing more than the calculated amount of lime, and lime is nothing more than calcium hydroxide. Correct? So let's observe the next one. The next section, and that is the permanent hard water and how we are going to treat it. Okay, so in a permanent hard water, before entering directly into the treatment, let's observe here that this permanent hard water is formed because of the contents such as the calcium or magnesium okay along with calcium and magnesium we have here either the chlorides or either the sulfates okay so in such condition let us say that we are going to represent this section as in the form of m now what we know is calcium is present in plus 2 form as well as magnesium is present as in the plus 2 ionic form. So therefore, let's take this into consideration and let's represent this as M plus 2. So wherever I'm going to write it as M plus 2, you should understand that this M plus 2 represents calcium or magnesium ions present in the hard water. Okay, so now let's start with the first technique of treatment. So we are going to treat a permanent hard water. So in permanent hard water what we have either calcium or magnesium, chlorides and sulfides. So when we take a look into it, the first type of treatment is with washing soda. That means when we take a hard water, a permanent hard water and when we treat this particular permanent hard water with washing soda. So what will happen there is this washing soda is having a composition of Na2CO3 that means it is a sodium carbonate. Now this sodium carbonate is going to react with the water 
containing the ions of calcium and magnesium replaces these things and then it is going to form or it is going to convert a permanent hard water into the soft water. We will see the reactions. So, on treatment, on the treatment of hard water, with sodium carbonate it exchanges the ions and converts the hard water or the permanent hard water to soft water. Okay, now let's see the reaction, how exactly this thing happens. So here, if we do observe, let's say I have Mg CO2 plus, of course, these are in the aqueous state. I'm going to add to this Na2CO3. Okay, so now what happens is upon the reaction, these two sodiums will react with chloride, therefore, forming 2 NaCl. Now, there is an exchange of ions. If you see, Chlorines have attached to sodium, forming sodium chloride, and sodium chloride in water has no effect, has no effect on its hardness. So therefore, here is one thing. Plus, what happens is Mg is combining with CO3, which is precipitated down. So this is how you are going to treat the particular water. Let us say that we have the second type that is instead of chlorine we have sulfate there. So in that particular case what we can show it as? Let's say we have a calcium sulfate. Okay this one we are going to react one with Na2CO3. Again exchange of ions. So what we are going to have is Na2SO4. Okay, so Na2SO4 remains in the aqueous state plus what we get here is calcium carbonate. Okay, so this particular thing, this entire reaction, we can generally represent it as M, where M can represent calcium or magnesium. Okay, so we will write over here as M plus 2 plus what do we have? Na2CO3 so I can also write this down as Mg sorry there's going to be MCO3 precipitates plus 2 sodium ions in water of course we can combine this particular sodium ion either with sulfate or either with chloride ions correct? so this is a way as how a permanent hard water is been treated with washing soda. Coming towards the next category and that is going to be the next type of treatment is very very important and that is called as the Clegans process. Okay, so in the Clegans process what happens is we take the hard water and we treat this hard water, we add a small amount of sodium hexa meta phosphate. So what we have here is clegan. Clegan means sodium hexa meta phosphate. Okay. So, therefore, when we take this 
sodium. Example, metaphor split, which we also call it as platen. Okay, so this platen is represented as Na6, T6, O18. Okay, so we are going to take this particular platen, put it into the water containing the ions of calcium as well as magnesium. Okay, so when we take this and when we insert it into water, the first reaction that occurs is going to be the dissociation of this complex. Okay, let's see how it dissociates. So, Na6, P6, O18. Okay, so when we put this thing into water, as we dissolve this thing into the water, what will happen is dissociates. As it dissociates, you are going to find that two sodium ions will come out. Okay, so how many we have now into the complex is 6 minus 2, there will be 4, right? So therefore, plus what we have here is Na4. We are going to have Na4 because we are going to lose two sodiums here. What we have is P6, O, Arena, minus 2 charge. Right? Now, that is this particular complex is going to react with our ions which are present in the hard water. Therefore, once this reaction starts, it happens something like this. Na4, P6, O, Arena, okay, minus 2. Now here, it is going to react with the metal. What metal is it going to react with? That is a calcium or magnesium. So what is the charge on calcium and magnesium in this case? It is going to be plus 2 charge. So therefore, let's write over here, plus 2. Okay, so one metal ion is more than enough in order to compromise the charge. So minus 2, plus 2. In this case, the sodium was containing plus 1. So two sodiums have gone out in order to produce a particular charge that is minus 2 on the charge, on the particular complex. So in order to compromise that particular charge, the ion that is the calcium or magnesium ion will be inserted into this complex and it will form Na4. Na4 M that is this particular metal, but M of course is going to be calcium or what we have is the magnesium. So what remains with us is P6 O18. Right? So this thing precipitates down and in the active solution what happens is we will have free sodium ions. Those free sodium ions will either combine with the chloride ions or with the sulfide ions. That will circle down and it has no effect on the hardness of water. Okay, so this was about the Clayton's process, one of the most important process which you have to remember. Forward with the next one and that is going to be an an ion exchange. Method. Okay, so in the ion exchange method, which is also called as is also known as the zeolite method, or we also call it as permit method. Okay, so either it can be called as zeolite or it can call be a permit method. So in this particular method, what they do is they use sodium, aluminium, silicate. Now this particular sodium, aluminium, silicate itself is nothing more than our zeolite. Oh yeah, in order to understand the reactions very effectively, what shall we consider is as this section will consider it to be as Z. 
So Z is nothing more than aluminium silicate along with what we have is sodium. Okay, so in order to understand the reactions much more in easier manner, we'll consider this case. Therefore, now when we take this particular sodium aluminium silicate and we treat the hard water with this, what happens then is NAZ. Okay, when it is going to be treated with the hard water. Now, hard water contains either calcium ions or it can contain magnesium ions. So, in order to represent this, we shall represent this as M plus 2. Okay, this is going to be present in the hard water and so therefore we are going to write this simple thing as M plus 2. Okay, so what will happen there is these ions will react with the zeolite section that is the aluminium silicate. Okay, but you should know that when sodium zeolite that is sodium aluminium silicate is going to be dissociated, what happens is it forms Na plus plus Z minus. Okay, so the charge on Z right now is going to be minus 1. So, in order to compensate this particular charge, we require 2Z minus in order to react with M plus 2 so that it can form MZ twice because we need a neutral one. Correct. So therefore, it is plus 2 and minus 1. So minus 1 into 2 times, it is going to form this. But, how many Zs do we have is only 1. So in order to balance that, what shall we do? We will take over here as 2. So now 2Z minuses are formed. So MZ 2 times. Okay. Plus 2 times Na plus ion is formed. This sodium ion will react with either it's going to be chloride of calcium or magnesium or it will react with the sulfate ions. Correct. So therefore, this is how it is going to help us in order to convert a hard water, a hard water into soft water. Moving further with the next concept as with the help of the synthetic resin method as how we are going to convert uh, hard water into soft water. So here if we take a look into first thing that is a resin. Now what exactly is a resin? Now resins are nothing more than a spherical shaped organic molecules. These are particular compounds which contain a large number of carbons having the end with an acidic groups. Okay, so therefore, these particular resins are something like R. If I am going to say R, R is nothing more than an alkyl group that is nothing more than a compound with a large number of carbon chains. Okay, so this particular alkyl group is connected to let's say HSO3. Okay, so HSO3 again an acidic group. You can also take it into consideration as R connected to COOH. Again an acidic group. Okay, so these are nothing more than a particular organic compound, a large organic compound containing HSO3 groups or COOH groups or in short I can say as an acidic group. Okay, so here these alkyl groups are connected to the acidic groups. So such kind of sphere-like substances, we call them as resins. Okay, so these resins are before treating with your hard water, we treat them with solution of NaCl. Okay, so that is the aqueous solution of NaCl when we treat this. That time this entire section is going to be replaced leaning forward for the formation of RNA. Okay, now this particular resin is taken and it is treated with a hard water. 
So in the hard water, what will happen is we are going to have either calcium or magnesium ions, which we will represent over here as M plus 2 ions. Now these M plus 2 ions, whatever we have, okay, in the water, they will come near the resin, they will replace this sodium and then they will come over here and attach. That is going to be like R2M plus 2N8 plus ions are going to be eliminated in this case. So this is how it happens. So here, these are the resins which are removed for water. Okay, in order to understand this particular phenomena, now I have explained in brief, in order to understand this phenomena, let us consider that Let us say that we have a big tank over here and look at this point of the tank, what will happen is there is a pipe through which the hard water enters into this tank over here, let us say it. Okay, let us say that this is the pipe through which water or hard water enters. Now here, in this particular case, what will happen is this entire section as what you see, this section is nothing more than, this is column, the column of ions, that is the synthetic resins or electron as Resins. Okay, so now from here we insert the hard water and this one will be the outlet for the soft water. Now, as the water comes through this inside, through this particular pipe inside. Okay, that means this particular water is going to be drained out like this. It levels up. So as it levels up, it goes through the column. There are two types of different columns fitted. One is what we call it as cation exchangers. And the second one, what we call it as and iron exchanges. Okay, so in cat iron exchanger, what happens in that particular case is here, whatever the cat ions are there. the 
other enamels such as the chlorides, sulfides. Okay, we we'll replace Cl minus. We have SO2 minus 2, such a kind of things. So let us consider Cl minus as X. Okay, so therefore, in this particular case, R to H will represent over here and X will represent chlorine. Okay, so what will happen? It will replace these. That means whatever the X minus ions are there in the hard water, this particular thing will go through these columns. When it is passing through these columns, our OH minus will replace the X minus over there and therefore we will end up getting over here as Rx plus OH minus. So at the end, what will happen is most of those particular ions are being replaced by H plus and on the other side in the anion exchangers we have OH minus ions so OH minus ion will react and it is going to produce demineralized water it gives us demineralized water or the water which is free from all different ions so here whatever you are getting that is going to be the demineralized water all right so this is how the entire thing goes coming forward with the last section for today and that is called as the heavy water so heavy water over here wherein the hydrogen is been replaced by deuterium so what we have here is D2O now this heavy water is usually used in moderators of nuclear reactors okay moderators or the coolants in the nuclear reactors now how is this particular D2O produced okay now this D2O or hen water is prepared or synthesized by electrolysis now this DTO also has different applications such as preparation of other deuterium products for example when we take into consideration of SO3 and the reaction with D2O Okay, so it will produce D2SO4. Okay, CaC2 calcium chloride on the reaction with D2O. What it happens is over here we get C2 C2 plus CaOD twice. So we have two deuteriums here, two deuteriums here, that is four. So we are going to get over here two D2O. So this is how it helps us in order to prepare different deuterium products. So this was about the heavy water. And if you come across the heavy water, if they ask me any questions about heavy water, you just need to simply say that heavy water is nothing more than D2O. It is used in the moderators of the nuclear power plants. It is used in the preparation of the other deuterium products and it is usually synthesized by the process of electrolysis. So, to take care, we'll see you in the next session.